Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 5, Lesson 21. And again, we're going to be using visual models to add a couple of fractions. Uh, we've got another wrinkle that'll happen a little bit later on that I'm not going to reveal for you right away, but it's very similar to what we did in Lesson Number 20. So let's take a look at a couple problems tonight, and we'll get you going with your homework. Let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number one reads as follows. Draw a tape diagram to represent each addend. Decompose one of the tape diagrams to make like units. Then write a complete number sentence. Use a number bond to write each sum as a mixed number. And that part is the only part that's really new tonight. Otherwise, it's very similar to what we did last night in lesson number 20. So let's take a look at problem 1C. We're asked to add two tape diagrams, four sixths and one half. So again, as with last night, I want to draw my two tape diagrams right on top of each other and right at the same length so that I'm really clear on what the sizes are. It'll make it easier for me to decompose. Let's see, four sixths. So I need to divide my top tape diagram into six. So let's see, that's about, ooh, boy, I've done poorly already. Let's see, let me grab that pen again. So I need to do six. Oh, there we go, that's a little better. Excellent. So that's one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the other one's simpler, I'm just doing halves. So right there, halves. And this is really helpful because it allows me to see right away that three six is exactly the same as a half. So let me go ahead and shade in four six in the, in the top one. There's four six here. And let me shade in the one half on the bottom one. All right, and let's pretend for a moment that we needed six in the bottom because we do need six in order to add these two together, right? So we could divide each of the halves in three parts and that would help us with sixths. And now we can write our number sentence that this is actually the same as four sixths plus, let's see, how many sixths is one half? One, two, three. Oh, that makes sense, right? Three sixths. Three sixths is the same as one half. Okay, now we have like units. We're working in sixths. Our denominators are the same, right? So now we can just add four plus three is seven, and we're working in sixths. Now the last part that we're going to do is this last part of the instructions. We're going to use a number bond to write each sum as a mixed number. And I noticed that because I noticed that I've got seven sixths in my answer. And if I use a number bond, I can say, let's see, seven sixths is made up of, let's see, we know that it's an improper fraction because the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So let's see if we can pull out one whole out of that. We're working in six, so how many sixths would we need to make a whole? Well, we would need six of them, right? And let's see, since we're doing a number bond, we know that these two pieces at the bottom have to add up to whatever this was. So if we had seven sixths up here and we've already used up six of them, that must mean that we have one sixth left over. And that tells me that my answer is going to be one whole and one sixth, right? The one whole is this part and the one sixth is this part. And that's another way of saying that these two answers are the same. They're equivalent, but this is a better form. This is a mixed number form, one and one sixth, whereas this is the improper fraction form of seven sixths. And so we settle on our answer one and one sixth. Awesome. Let's take a look at one more tonight. Let's take a look at problem number two. Problem number two asks us to draw a number line to model addition. Then write a complete number sentence. Again, we're going to use a number bond to write each sum as a mixed number. So let's take a look at what we're going to work on here. We're going to work on one of the problems, and that is problem 2b. Problem 2b, and 2b asks us 3 fourths plus 3 eighths, and we need to have a number line. Now let's see. We can start with a little bit of estimation, right? 3 fourths is a pretty big fraction, right? It's 3 fourths is most of the way to 1, and then we have 3 more eighths. Well, 3 eighths is already bigger than a quarter, so I know we're going to need to go past 1. So I'm just going to start our number line at 0, go out to 1, but then go all the way out to 2. And I have a feeling that we're going to need that. And let's see if we can go ahead and model on our number line how we would do this addition. Well, our first fraction is 3 fourths. So let's go ahead and divide our diagram up into fourths. Let's see, that's good. That's 1, 2, 3, fourth, 4 fourths in that one. And then let's go ahead and do the rest, right? We'll do these in fourths as well. Right, that gets us fourths. So 1, 2, 3, 4 gets us one whole. 1, 2, 3, 4 gets us another whole. Excellent. So where would we see 3 fourths? I see. We would see we would do one big hop out to right here would be plus, oops, sorry, plus 3 fourths. Excellent. Now we need to add some more. But this time we're not working in fourths, we're working in eighths. 
Well, let's see. We can decompose each of these fourths into eighths by adding a little tick mark, right? Divide each fourth into two parts, and now we've got eighths. Let's see if that counts up right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure enough, eight eighths gets us to one whole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing over here. Awesome. And so now we're ready to go ahead and add our second fraction, three eighths. So now we'll go ahead and do this, and we'll hop out one, two, three, and say that that is plus three eighths. And where do we end up? Well, we ended up on one of those little tick marks out here, right? It's not one, it's just a little bit further from one. So let's go ahead and count that up and we'll see if we can do that. Um, we can count up our three fourths. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. You know what? I'm going to write that. I'm going to say that that's part of our number sentence. That's six eighths plus, oh, our second thing is easy, right? It's just three eighths. So we can do, add that right in. Three eighths equals, well, let's see. If I look at the diagram, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9. Looks like 9 eighths. And sure enough, if I look at my number sentence, that makes sense, right? Because we're working in eighths, so we can add them together. They're like units. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 eighths. And then again, as with the last problem, we have one last step to do, which is that we are going to break down 9 eighths, which is an improper fraction, 9 eighths. We're going to break that down into two pieces. We've got a whole, which in eighths would be 8 of them. And it looks like we've got one more, right? Nine. We've got nine up here. We've got eight of them already used up. And that means we're going to have just one eighth left over here. And that'll help us get our answer in our mixed number, which is one and one eighth. And again, just as before, these two fractions are equivalent. This is the improper fraction version, nine eighths. And this is the mixed number, one whole and one eighth. Excellent. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Problem number three tonight asks you to solve using any strategy. Um, you can use number lines. You can use tape diagrams. You can figure those things out. You can figure out like units on your own using multiplication or division if that's appropriate. Um, but I'm not going to model one of those problems because that really is up to you to pick the tool that you think will solve the problem best and to, to just apply it. So I'll join you next time on Mr. Kung Has Problems.